Welcome back to Haunted Garage. My name is Frank Cambletta. I hope you had a very happy holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, did I offend anybody? No. Good. Absolutely. Yes, because you didn't meet. You didn't mention Festivus. Oh exactly. my Festivus. God. <laughs> happy or Festivus. Krampus. You did not say Krampus. Happy Happy Festus. <laughs> happy Festus, Missouri. Festus, Missouri. Uh-huh. I have my grievances. My co-host is always Jeremy David King. David. And this is the interview series. And our first interview is going out to local medium extraordinaire, Brittany Buckwalter. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the show. Extraordinary. It's still Danielle. I think I'm going to put that. It's because St. Louis is French, and every now and then I add a French word, like extraordinaire. Danielle. <laughs> It is? S- snails. Maybe. <laughs> I did not know that Saint My Louis name. is French. <laughs> <laughs> Male Is it, you know, if you go into an uh, art museum and you ask where the mayonnaise is. It's nuts. And they paint it, and, you know, what is this? I, I need a salad condiment here. <laughs> <laughs> well, today is, is a special show because we go into the interview series of Haunted Garage. Yes, we're going to have plenty of haunted transportation. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about haunted transportation with somebody that actually might be able to still see the driver. Uh, so, but first, before I think we dive into, um, not only who you are as a person, but actually what you do, I think there's a common misconception between what a medium is, what a psychic is, um, what is a, a sense, a sensitive, um, I'm a three (laughs) X. Here we go again. Here we go. Now we got three spirits. Yes. They always come in three. Well, I always say that um, communication is a cocktail between you, spirit, and the medium, or whoever's being read. But so psychic is someone who can um, feel into a situation. Usually it is prophetic. So we're able to tell you, I feel like this is going to happen with you, or that's going to happen with you. Every psychic has their own niche. Um, you know, some are more um, medical related. So you would go see um, like a, a psychic that's a nurse f- if you want um, to be diagnosed properly with something you might have or, you know, you're confused and um, you've been to a million doctors and you're not sure. that. So there's lots of different niches of psychics. But yes, you're totally right. People constantly... Um, the term psychic and the term medium interchangeably, and that's just not the case. So a psychic is able to um, predict things. They have the ability to be prophetic, and they all have their own niche. Like, some of them are medical. Some of them are dream, dreamer, dream, dream. So hold on. Prophetic dreamers. I'm I'm going to step you back. So some of them, you said, are are dreams? Some, so... uh, Because every medium or every psychic or psychic medium is uh, as unique as your fingerprint. Right. So um, what one psychic is really, really good at um, getting information on another psychic might not be, Mm. you know, like finding lost things or um, predicting medical ailments, just all of those different things. Everybody usually has a niche. I'm kind of all over the place. (laughs) Uh, As far as psychic goes, there's several different niches that I fall into. Um, but so that's what a psychic is. A medium can speak with the dead. They can communicate with uh, spirit. And so th- that is completely different from what a psychic does. However, um, while you can be a psychic without um, having the ability to communicate with the dead, you cannot be a medium and have the ability to communicate with the dead without first being a psychic. It's kind of confusing, but oh. you really have to have that psychic foundation. Makes sense, though. You have to have that intuitive muscle um, nice and flexed in order to be able to communicate with the other side. Now, do you think everybody can have that sense? Can, can that be taught? Can you train your mind to possibly... I guess we're talking about the reinvigorating of the sixth sense, right, is what it is. Right, yep. So, but because... There is study that show that there might have been at some point how we communicate it because we didn't we weren't born with voices. I mean, this is this is a whole thing that Spencer Wells gets into with a book called Pandora's Seed. I've heard. Yeah, it's a really crazy kind of how our voices came to be, but it used to be a bunch of like sounds, chirps, and tweaks and clicks. It was well, yeah, very. If you strange. think about it, we communicated telepathically mm-hmm. for eons before we actually developed language in general. So, do I believe that um, everybody is psychic? A hundred percent. 
I am still on the fence on whether I believe um, that mediums are born or 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 they can be trained. Um, I do think that. I do think that everybody is psychic, but just like everybody has the ability to sing, you don't want to hear everyone sing. Gotcha. So, so there, there are crappier psychics out there. Well, yeah, I mean, people who don't have, uh, they don't get it naturally. You right. Know what I'm it's saying? like I see a Ford in your future, and it ends up being a Chevy, and you're like, oh. Well, psychics make those mistakes too. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> see, I could predict that he was going to get mad when I said that. Is that prophetic? Is that psychic? Or is that just innate? <laughs> that's many years of friendship yes okay so the trigger we call it today trigger oh no no i'm not one of those and for you zinnios out there the word of the day is trigger um, i have no life and then you the know, name of the Lo- lone ranger's nephew's horse get a sticker get a sweater if you write trigger in the comment section <laughs> of the youtube video um so you you said that you had to be psychic before you could be medium and is that only when it comes to talking to the, the dead, the passed on. I'm. What do you mean? So before you can be a medium, you have to be a psychic. I think that um, anybody who has um, what people would call a uh, constant, um, what is it? Gut feeling. Yeah. No. I mean, intuition. It is intuition, but um, people who have the natural ability. It will almost, if you're going to be a medium at some point, it will just happen b- because you already have that within you or you already have the ability to do it. Um, the psychic, most people find out they're psychic far be- long before they find out they're medium. Sometimes it's the other way around. But if a, a medium finds out that they're a medium before they find out they're a psychic, they were already psychic. You gotcha. know what I mean? Like it's so just, it's, it's almost, a, it's a graduation level. Yeah. Okay, Definitely. so it's almost like the uh, the doctoral of the psychic medium, right? So yes, you can concentrate, train if you have psychic ability, and then eventually that next level would be medium. Yeah. And so the real difference is 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 the difference sensing ghosts versus actually seeing ghosts. Um, well, that goes right back to um, the clairs. So there's clair aliens, which is the ability to smell things that you shouldn't be able to smell. A lot of times people will say that they were in their kitchen and nobody else was around and they just smelled smoke, right? So there's clair aliens, clair gustance is the ability to taste. Sometimes if I'm bringing someone through uh, who died a, a death um, that's blood related, I'll taste blood. Why are you laughing? Yeah, why are you laughing? <laughs> I don't even want to know. Oh, it tastes like semen. Stop it. (laughs) I think it was Jeffrey Epstein. This message is brought to you by Siemens Corporation. (laughs) Look at Fabi over there. I'm sitting over here trying not to laugh. I just can't. Oh, my God. Were you? Dude, psychic. I have to tell you. Tastes like shit. (laughs) <laughs> that's because it is shit austin well, that explains it then <laughs> okay rewind um I, I have to tell you i've never tasted semen in that well i don't even want to go any further <laughs> I'm not, I, man. no no that is not the case i've never tasted semen this is the first and last time you ever come to you know podcast Look, i've never tasted it from spirit <laughs> You're but like, how would you die you going? <laughs> if you taste semen? How would how did that? I have no clue. Down? That's just what came to my mind. I, I mean, was like, choked, if I'm a ghost, choked, choked to death <laughs> on a cock or something. Yeah. Just, yeah. If I'm a ghost, I'm gonna be. You know the, what they say is every time you yawn, a ghost puts his dick in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be me as a ghost. Do you smell that? It smells like a fart. Oh, it tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay? It's like my underwear for a stool sample. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, I wanted to try the, the interview thing and, you know, it's the same shit. I can't, it's I the can't same shit with another person. In the oh, room. my God. <laughs> my face hurts. I can't help it. Anyways. Okay, well, I want to get back into... The different types. So you <sighs> said that there are ones that basically can smell roses or cigars or something. There are people that can... The taste thing is kind of strange to me. Isn't I mean, we went down crazy? a little rabbit hole with that, but 
Like, what do you mean taste wise? Like, um, so usually I won't experience the, these clairs are, um, are interchangeable for psychics and mediums. We would just experience it differently. So, um, if I'm taste this, the very first time I ever experienced this, I went to a mediumship event like I do and I was sitting in the back and, um, I kept craving grape jelly. I could taste it in my mouth. Oh, that's I interesting. Could, I could feel it like right back here in my jaw. Yeah. It was so sweet. I mean, it felt like I was eating grape jelly. And this was before I knew I was a medium. And so I said to my friend sitting next to me, I'm like, do you smell or taste grape jelly? And she's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, I know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Clearly the guy died in a waffle house. So, but, I mean. Well, <laughs> what happened was the lady next to me. So my friend's here. I'm right here. The lady next to me, I have no idea I'm a medium. The, the lady next to me goes, did you say grape jelly? And I'm <laughs> like, yes. She said, I buried my husband with a packet of grape jelly. She said he took grape jelly everywhere. He would steal it from the restaurants and he would put it on everything. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've Fried known people chicken, to do this. Yep, everything. Yep. And so it was a big funny like debacle um, or inside joke or whatever about the, the, the grape jelly. But instead of... I feel like they made me taste that and and have that sensation so that I would know that this is something different instead of it just entering my mind. Cause most of the stuff that I get from the other side is um, just comes in like a thought. You're just thinking it right. Can I tell this to my nutritionist that I'm not fat. <laughs> I, I'm just a psychic and I taste stuff. And when I sell it, I need to eat it. It's right. And that's like 24 seven. So Got it. Pretty much. So many dead people. It's just, it's handled. I'm craving ham right now. I'm craving that's probably fried one of your relatives. chicken. That's probably one of your relatives. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's my grandma. Wait, I'm Jewish. No, I'm just. <laughs> All right. So after taste, what's the next one? So we said clearly aliens, clear gustance. Um, clear sentient is the ability to just feel. You okay. just know, like you know, like you know, you don't know how you know, but you know. There's clairvoyance, which a lot of people will just say, um, you know, oh, she's a clairvoyant. That drives me up the wall because clairvoyance is just the ability to see. And and there's so much more to a psychic medium than just her ability to see. You use all your senses all day long. Right. So, so I would use all of those senses. Backing it up for the people with the intelligence that I have. Um, <laughs> when you say see, are you saying actually see dead people? Like so sixth a, sense type stuff? Yes. So there's a couple different ways. But even, but hold on. So if you can't, so if you can just see... Then you really can't communicate. Right. Are they interacting with you or the can they see you? Well, that- when I say I can see, I'm talking about all different um, all different ways of being able to see. I'm not just talking about being able to see a full-on apparition. I'm talking about uh, they'll, like with his dad, I had a hard time understanding him um, language-wise. Did he speak English? Mm-hmm. Okay. I had, a, I had a little bit of a barrier with understanding the things that he was telling me. So what they'll do is they'll show me like an image in my mind. And that's a whole nother part of what being able saying? to see. Sometimes they'll play a video for me. You know, like if, if so, I'm trying to figure out how someone died, I'll say, show me. And they'll show me, you know, laying in their bed, hooked up to oxygen, you know, <laughs> whatever their last moments were. And so, yeah, there's a million different ways to see. A lot of people just think when I say see, though, I'm talking about just a visual, which I, I do get that. It takes about 30 minutes of being around someone before I'm able to actually visually see what the person looks like. Okay. And so, so after sight, right? So C has a bunch of different categories in and of itself. Subcategories. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so you could talk about voids. shadows and yeah. Okay. And then the last one, and I think it, this is the most important one, although I have found that it's not a very common one is um, clear audience, the ability to hear. Oh, like in, in and audible and voices. Both inaudible and audible. I have heard spirits say my name so loud before. It's actually in my book. <laughs> um, I was in my kitchen and I heard Brittany extremely loud in a very low, deep voice. And at the time, I thought it was the person that was in the other room talking to me. And so I, I went in and I'm like, what do you want? And they're like, what? <laughs> You're losing it. <laughs> so I've had that happen. So when you, went that to, happen. when you went to the conference, you were interested in it. Something drew you there. And <laughs> up until that point, 
had you been what conference are you talking about the spirit event that I went yes, to? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Before you, you yeah. know, the grape jelly incident. Yeah. But you, you know, you saw him and he was just eating grape jelly. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see so him you see, at you all. Just, you just. Nope, it's just, just a taste tasted thing. it, brought it up, and that was literally all I had to say. She knew. You know what are the odds of that? Now had that happened before to you before you even even thought about being a medium and because I hear you. But hindsight you, 2020 you, know, you get kicked out of concerts a lot so, <laughs> at this point in your life so um, oh i did at five finger death punch i got kicked out of too <laughs> <laughs> i forgot about that she was the opposable thumb. oops so yeah and i, I totally out. forgot about that uh but so what were you saying i'm sorry so when you were a kid were you seeing stuff that wasn't there were you hearing stuff yes that, i okay my first yeah the first time i ever saw spirit i was um four years old and um my my mom and this is a crazy crazy story. I don't know if you want me to tell it. No, go ahead. This is in Kentucky. No, this was in. Um, we were back home in Philadelphia because that's where most of my oh. family live. Philadelphia, Missouri. Missouri. Yes. yes. Okay. We got to be clear on that. Yeah. Like, I'm from Manhattan. I'm right. Like, I know. I know. You don't even know what a bagel tastes like. Um. <laughs> so, anyways, my mom and and my aunt were driving home after having several drinks. I don't. I'm sure one of them is responsible, but, um, and they took a curve and um, my. I think it was my aunt that was driving. She slammed on her brakes because they hit somebody. Oh, God. Now, it was the middle of the night, New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve. I can't remember which one. And they pull off to the side of the road to see where they can find this guy because they they both know that they hit someone. Yeah. And they get out, and they can't find him anywhere. Two hours later, you know, unbeknownst to me, I'm being babysat by my grandma. I'm four years old. Uh, my mom and I and my little brother were laying on the couch and I said, mommy, who's that man with the long black jacket and th- the black hat? And she's like, what? She was like John Cusack. <laughs> oh, <Well>. my. <laughs> <laughs> she, ch- yeah, basically so, the yeah, matrix. Yeah, exactly. Um, like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, it's Keanu. If that would have been the case, you know, I was only four. So anyways, um, she, she, kind of brushed it off but the next morning I hear her talking frantically and she's like she described the man that we saw to a T she brought up the coat according to them um the reason they thought they hit this guy was because his trench coat his black trench coat flew up on top of the um windshield oh so but then they get out there's no coat there's no man there's nothing so you guys all had a paranormal event yeah and I believe that for most people you're kind of set up like that. You mm. have these paranormal events early on in your life so that you have um, them to fall back on when you realize that you have this ability. Like, shit, this stuff's been happening my whole life. Like when Harry talked to the anaconda. Yes, correct. Dude, exactly. she's lucky. Sponsored by the Wizarding World. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not a sponsor. You're lucky that you survived Jeepers Creepers. I know, right? <laughs> I know. I'll never forget the first... You want to know something crazier? This is, it's, yes. it's about to get even yes. crazier. Uh my Aunt Lana, the one that was driving the car, now lives in Michigan just like two miles away from the house that the Jeepers Creepers um, was. In the first one? Yeah, the whole. Yeah, it's Midwest, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. She lives like right next to it. And it is creepy as hell, that house. That's yeah. crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's yeah. awesome. And so to have those two experience, the, yeah, it's just weirdly weird. So it's interesting to have the paranormal event. And then that just, I guess that just tracks for the rest of your life till you go to the conference and then you realize, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a deep dive in this and you start. Actually, I didn't even want to go. You didn't want to go. I had nobody to talk to. I, I was, but one of my best friends uh, called, it was three hours away and she's like, please come, please. She's like, I'll pay for your ticket. I'll pay for your gas. Just come. And I'm like, I don't have any interest in this i don't <laughs> but she was persistent and i'm glad she was because i learned that night that i was a medium and this is your full-time pos- position now correct oh yeah because i know you used to you did something else prior to this right um i did hair for That's right. years yeah yeah okay cosmetology mm-hmm. okay and then you go to you know astrophysics <laughs> <laughs> basically yes <laughs> It was a big leap. <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit of a leap, but it was in the allergies, so you're good. Mm. Um, so you take it on full time, and then I guess a lot of the audience, because I, I did a little poll, and, and like a lot of times when people have mediums and psychics on, they want you to do a read, and they want me to tell you who the guy, what color am I holding. We're not doing that here. This is not a Bill Murray movie. Appreciate but, you. Uh, the, the thing that I think that, that I liked from people's questions was like a lot of them um, 
maybe you're going through something that you're going through. I mean, earlier we talked about, you know, how visions and apparitions are brought on to, you know, Fabian's conflicts within the war, you know, mm-hmm. having a, you know, traumatic brain injury or PTSD. So, so there are levels in your life where you can gain the ability as well when you come close to death. I mean, so I'm guessing Absolutely. with Fabian, it's more like, I mean, he could have died. I mean, Absolutely. he woke up Absolutely. in Texas, right? I mean, so all of those things, I guess when you're talking like, you know, if something traumatic happened, whether military or maybe you got into an accident or something like that. It's extremely common to and, have to have a, a either a near-death experience or a... Um, a life-changing experience mm-hmm. for this to kind of kick in. And I don't know the science behind it. I don't know why that, it, you know, so often that tends to happen. But um, when I had my son, um, I almost bled out. I almost bled to death. Oh, my God. And so I, and then it was right after I had him that I found out that I had, I truly had a psychic ability. And, and, and then like four or five um, months later is when I found out I was a medium as well. <laughs> So does, so, okay, to that point, have you ever had um, premonitions or is that something completely different? No, totally. That's just like another name for visions or, okay. um, I think one of the most common used ones uh, now is a download. You'll probably hear people say, I, I got a download. And I, I really prefer to use that instead of vision because it doesn't make me feel like I am in the sixth right. sense. <laughs> You're like a, a sorceress in a bad fantasy exactly. novel. People take it much more serious when you say I have a download versus I just had a vision. I have, yeah, I had a I'm vision. having the vapors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the vapors. I like that. You got the vapors. Give me a, take the ghost out my blood. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. God, I, I love history. <laughs> uh, who's the guy that, I just want to know the guy that I, if like, say so for my thing is like, if I, if I had the gift, Okay, not to not to shit on you or, or make fun of you or anything. But if I had the gift, I feel that those would be the people that I'd want to talk to. Like the guy that really thought, and if he still thinks that ghosts can be in your blood and you need to do a, Let's what do they him. call it? A, a, uh, a letting. A letting. Blood letting. Blood letting. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. They used leeches. Jesus Christ. You know, I, nothing, I, this is my new mantra or has been my mantra for the last like five years. Nothing surprises me anymore. Mm. Anything is possible. So have you, now me and you together, we have worked on a case where you live in Hannibal mm-hmm. about the three lost boys. Um, and we, we had some interesting things develop from a, a book that I will not give the name of because I don't want anybody. We shall not speak. Shall not speak. But this particular Voldemort? person created a <laughs> cloud of confusion because he brought in too many psychics and then almost gave away the story. So are you, a, are you a psychic medium that would rather not know anything when you go into a situation? Forensic mediumship is completely different okay. in my eyes, and I have studied forensic mediumship, than, um, than just regular mediumship. If I'm working a case, you know, where we're trying to either locate or find this person or find out who hurt them, um, it is best for me to start knowing all the facts. Like if we're looking for a mer- missing person, I need to know that, I'm like a dog. Like I need to make sure I'm on the right yeah. s- trail, right? Um, because I could sit here and I could try to read, um, you know, this person that's already been passed or murdered or whoever it is. But if I don't have anybody to fact check my evidence, I'm just wasting my time and my energy. Mm-hmm. So I prefer to have someone there to be like, okay, it may, I want to give you what I've got first, <laughs> but then let's go and make sure that I'm on the right trail. Right. Because there are so many dead people. They're, they're everywhere. Yeah. So in the, in the case of, and, the, and this is something that I'll probably bring up on both channels, um, the, the thing with the Lost Boys of Hannibal, the case that where me and you met, actually, um, the, 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 that case in and of itself was interesting in, in the likeness that you guys had, according to the book, which the book's kind of wrong, but the point, the, this book, Kinda? <laughs> well, maybe the whole thing, but this book points to an area where eventually I would dig up a football field and use my amazing marketing skills to convince everybody that this is the thing we should do. <laughs> the schmooze Meister general. Yeah. So, um, that can't be done. I'm like, uh, hold my beer. <laughs> that's the type of guy that I am. So, um, you know, you play the right channels, you do the right things, you say the right things. It's all about how you have your conversation. So we dug up this area. We didn't find anything. And I think that the letdown was the fact that you guys did feel something there. There, there was something there. And so I haven't told you this yet, 
Um, You're going to tell me this. I'm going right to tell you this right air? now. Yes, just to get a real reaction. But oh, you, great. you guys weren't that far off. The only problem was it wasn't a boy's; it was a girl. So in that same area where we dug up, if you go up about 50 yards, they found a human skull there in 1968. And it was held in somebody's house until that person died and she went into a nursing assisted living home. And when the kids were going through everything, they found a human skull in a box. That human skull was then given to Rawls County because of where it was found, it's Rawls County. So that's how you know that where you guys were is Rawls County. It's not Hannibal. It's not Marion County. So it had to go to Rawls County. So the sheriff called me and said, hey, can you bring your forensic team up here and and actually, she did. She came up. She took it with her. Unfortunately, the only thing we could get off the skull, because the skull had amazing exposure to all the elements, so right. you really can't pull DNA from it. What is inside the frontal lobe of the skull right here, uh, female black women have a tendency to grow more calcium in there. That's not an intelligence thing. It's not a more psychic thing. It's just that's how they're genetically forms they get more calcites inside the brain it doesn't affect the brain it doesn't do anything but the older an african-american woman is the more that is indented so they put the age of the girl between 23 and 31 black african died in that forest and if you can imagine how hannibal would have been um in the 1930s where they think that, that that's when yeah, she died at, yeah i looked at some yeah some maps and yeah some old pictures and so I think that's weird that you guys had placed something there. And then I think with his conjecture and feeding you guys, you kind of put two and two together. It's like, well, there is something here. And if you're telling me that's what happened here, that might be it. Yeah. I, and I, I've said this many times and I'll continue to say it. I, I don't necessarily feel like he, um, influenced me. I would be willing to bet just about anything. He influenced the other two because I was the first one to go. Gotcha. Um, but initially you didn't want to go there. No, I didn't. I, I, I kept saying TT, TT, TT. Like, we have to Jeremy go. Jeremy says that for another reason. I do. TT? TT. TT. What is that? He loves those TTs. Um, oh. TTs. <laughs> Whatever. Um, what did you say earlier? Pumpkin tits? Or what? sweet? What? Sweet tits. Sugar tits. Sweet sugar tits. <laughs> <laughs> those are the old shows in the 1940s when they had, like, women on. Like, yeah. all right. The whole studio was just smoke. smoke. It's, a, it's all you saw was like the shoulders down, yep. um, and a burning cigar. But no, the the thing I, I think that um, with that case in particular, it it's very cloudy. Mm -hmm. It's a cloudy the and all the stuff that happens in Hannibal. Well, and I do also have to say that when he and I would communicate, I don't I don't know if I'm comfortable saying this on air, but when he and I would communicate, there was a lot of. Um, now this is what she saw. Did you, do you pick up on this? And yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. It, he was very eager for me to right. say the same things that they had said. And I, and, and I, you know, it is, we don't have to be saying the same stuff because we're all going to read and pick up on things completely different. Like I said, going back to every psychics as individual as a fingerprint. Remember, you know? remember when I was talking about string theory? Yeah. And the differences between the two sides of science mm -hmm. explaining what particle physics are. We're saying the same thing. Yeah. But we're, we're describing it differently. Yeah. And then measuring it differently. Yeah. Uh, two different mathematical principles. But we're, we're ending thing. up at the same. We're ending up at the same conclusion. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people have uh, stated about um, in death. And if you took a poll uh, in, in 2009, if you took a poll in 2009, uh, the majority of people living in America believe there's an ever after. That statistic would roughly come in about 43.7%. Today, that same statistic, now we look at over 12 years later, well, more than that, actually, yeah. 2009 to 24. I mean, that's that's a long, that's 15 years, right? Right. So now, 15 years later, that number has gone down to 21%. Which blows my mind because it's a much more accepted theory yeah. today than it was it is, 20 years it's ago. very well it, what's happening is and i don't want to get political but what's happening is is that people are being told what to think for the first time i feel like they've been told what to think forever yeah well through media through religion yeah, <laughs> yeah and we're starting to see and, and actually media is a type of religion i mean now that you really look at it when you kind of just go to the bare minimum of what news is it's a person a lector or reverend telling you the good news of the day and also the bad news and what not to do and what to do so 
in and of itself, news anchors have become the reverend that is preaching, you know, whether it's disinformation or whatever to people. And I think that people are so short sighted as to be scared to say, you know, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or, you know, saying things in the likeness of, you know, God bless you is another thing that triggers people now. So we've we've equated that God is is less and less and less. And if you go biblical with it in the end times between the book of Daniel and Revelation, he says that the word of God would be missing that you would hear it but not fear it. And and these are the types of things that people get scared of because we're starting to see this this curve, right, about the, the angel with the halo around his head and he had his foot on the sea and he had his foot on the earth. And he was telling people and, you know, that people, you will, you will speak the truth and people will not hear it. And we're starting to come in that. So as a medium psychic, is there something that, or psychic medium, is there something that, conjures within all of you guys that is seeing something more prophetic that something is going on that is there an end to this or two-part question is there a dark side is there satan is there demons are these things and, and have they interacted in the sense of you know either being prophetic or you know fucking around with you and trying to pretend there's somebody else i mean are those occurrences happen yeah um they happen all the time i prefer to live in this special um world with glitter and um, mm-hmm. happiness and uh, only good and light. And so I won't allow myself to communicate with energies that are um, that low. And I also just, um, I'm a huge believer in manifestation. So just talking about um, the dark side of things. And I mean, I like a good a scary movie, horror movie, just as much as anybody else. That's not what I'm talking about. Um giving credence to and energy to um, hell and the dark side of things is not something I'm comfortable doing. So, um, and and I feel like that's just part of my psychic self-defense, right? Keeping myself clean and clear of anything that could possibly take me over. I don't want to be involved in that. But um, it took me, if you would have asked me this question five years ago, I probably would have told you I didn't believe in hell, (laughs) just because I wanted to stay in this naive La La Land. Um, But since then, my guides have made sure that I have um, seen or uh, in some way, shape, or form experienced, usually secondhand, what um, dark entities can do to people. My best friend, Chantel Renee, her job is to remove attachments. I mean, that is what she physically does. You, you, she had a guy on her, uh, not on her bed, but on her table not long ago, bleeding from his eyes. Jesus. As she removed this attachment. <coughs> um, and it, you know, it's changed his whole life and he's so much better. But um, I, I just prefer to not, to not deal with that. So what I do is I'll call my bestie and I'll be like, Hey, I got a weird one. <laughs> and I think you need to take, take, we got an eye bleeder here. <laughs> um, you lined up. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And in fact, you know, on Haunted Garage, I had had the thought that, oh my gosh, if, if you get something in there that is, you know, you need to call Chantel. <laughs> well, see, that's, I think that's where I'm going. The, the thing with um, staying in the light and staying in, in the glitter unicorn realm, um, there there needs to be a sense of what, I guess, the, and that would be the forensic psych, psychic mediums, right? Where they're because they'd have to tap into something dark when you're going into a John Wayne Gacy. Well, or- let me tell you this. This is this is why I sit so uh, sit on the fence with with the whole de- uh, uh, you know hell thing. Because when I was working on that book, the person that I brought through who looks identical can I say who looks yeah. identical oh, to right. T to J- John Wayne Gacy and this Ter what is his name Terrence Terrence look identical. Yeah, Terrence, they do. Terry Tate. There's the TT. No, uh, Tommy Terrence. Tommy Terrence Tate. Yeah. They look they look so much alike. Um, and so I don't I don't know if they, they were not very good communicators. Mm. Uh, this guy that I brought through, but I know that I brought through. I I truly feel I brought through the killer of these boys, and to be able to do that, I'm like okay, so I can communicate with people from hell or. Who am I to say that John Wayne Gacy went to hell? Should he have? Fuck yeah. But I I don't, I don't, 
You don't have that type of control. Well, yeah, he just he doesn't just come up and say, I'm him from hell. Here, yeah. let's start. Nobody does. Nobody just shows up in pass. flames. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Shows up in flames. <laughs> nobody, nobody does. Uh, so for hey, that, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just got done shoving a pineapple up Hitler's ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny that you mentioned Hitler uh, because. <laughs> it's not, actually. Not on this show. <laughs> 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 have you listened to the uh, Volkswagen episode? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> yeah. It well, got demonetized. This- <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we were Hamas on that show, but whatever. This lady, I would never even met her in my life. Um, she actually owned Carlox Cars in Hannibal. Yeah. Okay. She. They were great people. Oh my god! Sad to hear about their past. I know she. So, <laughs> I somebody had given her my phone number, like one of my friends, and she calls me she texts me actually because i won't answer random calls and um she said you know my name is so and so and i own carlax cars and i was wondering if you would come down and talk to me and in my mind i'm thinking this lady wants a free reading or she thinks she's <laughs> not that i'm like you know i have to charge for everything but um but but that's we'll get to that i want to pick that back up because that is a thing I mean, where people are like, you know, oh yeah, it's like 100%. going to a restaurant trying to meatloaf before you order it. I exactly, mean, it's the dumbest. <laughs> I know. So she, she I, I walk in and I'm like, I'm here to talk to this lady, and he's like, Oh, my wife, she's in her office. Go on back. And so I go into her office and I sit down and I immediately felt her daughter, her that had passed, which obviously I didn't know um, until I got in there, but I felt her daughter, and so I assumed that that's what I was going to be doing. And she said, Brittany just weird to have this woman address me. I don't even know her. She said, where do you think Hitler went? This is the first words out of this woman's mouth to me. I like her already. (laughs) She said, where do you think Hitler went? And I was so perplexed. And I said, well, hell. She's like, no, he didn't. She said, Hitler was sent here to show us what pure evil looks like. Hmm. Hitler was sent here um, to teach us how not to be. And she said that he um, signed a soul contract, which soul contracts were something I, I've always believed in, but she said he signed a, a soul contract to come down here and teach us how not to be. And she said, there is no hell. And when, and that was it. That was it. That was what she wanted it's to a, tell it's me. It's an interesting... It is an interesting concept. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, some people just don't, know how to apologize anymore we we're, we've become that too yeah. um is this is it, like even if you're wrong like i have more respect for people to say you know what man i was fucked up on that i apologize you know i was wrong i, I should have our politicians can't do the world leaders can't do that they can never admit they're wrong um and i don't give a shit what side you stand on they both will not admit they're wrong they will say or point to something else but i think the biggest problem right now is people that you know, the heaven hell conversation is weird, right? Like, this because, is weird. Because we're saying that, like, if if heaven is above, then earth is hell. Right. <laughs> it's like, because we're below heaven, right? So, yeah. you know, and I think in and of itself that that does make sense to a certain degree that, you know, I popular fiction or I get that the Bible is that old. I get that the Bible is still, you know, the most checked out, the most read, and most iconic and stuff like that. But... You know, the statistics are showing some interesting stuff, you know, like the statistic in 2009 I gave you guys earlier. There's a statistic as of 2021, the most converted religion, people converting to, is Muslims to Christian. Wow. That's the most conversion rate right now. Makes a lot of sense. Right now, because what what's happening? Well, you lost a lot of Christians during the Dark Ages. You lost a lot of Christians during the Crusades. You lost a lot of Christians during the pedophiles. You, when you see your religion that is supposed to stand for something righteous, yeah. do something that terrible, then you lose the faith. And everybody, like all these Catholic churches, and like me and Fabian are both Catholic, and I, and I do, to some degree, love my religion. I love where my roots are. But at the same time, I have to admit the fact that it's not because people are less into God. They're less into your bullshit. Mm-hmm. They're less into, like, hearing how you can stand up there and talk about righteousness when half the staff in this place is molesting and raping children right. and putting nuns in forests like that, sh- like the one keepers. Netflix documentary, The Keepers. I mean, that... That's f- what a, that's about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As a, as, as a Catholic, it, you know, with Boston Spotlight, you know, because I, I at one point wanted to be clergy. I mean, there are priests in my family. There are cloister nuns in my family. And I'm very close to Father Gary Thomas, who they made a movie of uh, called the, you know, the, 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 the Last, The Right. 
And, you know, I, I interviewed him. I actually sent you that interview, guys. You both have mm -hmm. that now as a backup. But I went out to California. I interviewed him as being the number one premier exorcist that actually exercised a fellow priest Ugh. and cardinal. So that's crazy. There is definitely the evil aspect of what that dark matter is, right? Because once again, the two worlds blend. We always say that like metaphysical and the physical are, are two different things. One is like a, you know, it's a bullshit belief in, in fairy tales and in astrology science. At mm -hmm. the same time, science backs up mediumship more than it backs up any religion. Because if you look at dark anti antimatter and light, it, it's very much Matter choreographed. Matter and antimatter are literally right. Uh, there, so for every oxygen atom, there is an dark and anti-oxygen matter. Yeah. Yeah. And if they, they can't coexist in the same space, and that's how we know or theorize there's something called subspace. Or, um, or as others would say, it's multidimensional. Yeah. It just makes sense. It is multidimensional, definitely. Mm -hmm. People don't understand that... Um, well, talking about cars, being like, how can a car be haunted? Seriously? I'm like, every if, if, if we go off of what you think, every place is haunted and everything is haunted. And it is mm -hmm. because we are just we are just in a different dimension. We're on the exact same plane. We are sharing the same plane. I feel like I don't usually use the term heaven um, unless I'm you know, talking to someone who wants to know if their loved one made it there or not. And then in that, in that context, I'll use it, but I say the afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, but there we're it's all in the same place. <laughs> we're all here together. We're all doing this together. Mitha, I, Mitha, I, just, when, I don't like to use, uh, I don't, so yeah, I, to answer your question, I'm sorry, interrupting you, but no, fine. Um, I just prefer to not um, partake in, talking about or opening myself up to anything that has to do with hell or dark entities or demonic situations do, because anybody can be right. susceptible to that. Have you ever been in a situation where um, you were doing one of your sessions, paid sessions, she's not free. Cause <laughs> you know, we, we don't ask you to give your services up for free. Um, but uh, one, it, in any one of your sessions since you've been doing them, have you ever had a client come in and talk about uh, a family member that did wrong in his life, whether he was a murderer, a rapist, serial killer? How do you, have you been able to reach those? Because that would, for me, be more that, that dark side, right? Now, how do I, how do I dip my toe in that? Um, or do you just not take on those types of clients? Um, well, there's really no vetting system for the clients mm. that I take on. I don't like pre-read my clients, so I wouldn't know um, prior to that that I would be speaking with um, someone that was that horrible in life. But um, I have actually, on many occasions, uh, brought through someone who wanted to apologize. You know, Grandpa wanted to apologize for molesting you. Oh, wow. Or, yeah, definitely. So that, that's what I'm saying is like, if there is a hell, mm. um, and I'm like 90% sure there is, if there is a hell, I'm not picking up on it. Well, see, I'm that's, not, and that's kind of where I want it. I would, in my head, wanted the conversation to go because biblically there is no hell yet. And that's what everybody misses. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I it's always you're argument. asleep. You're asleep in Christ. I mean, that's yeah, you're you're, no you're per, all, all human souls. Yeah, will end up not, in purgatory until the right. final judgment. Exactly. No, Whether, nobody's been judged yet. And the difference is, is that it's there's a rest and then there's purgatory. Purgatory, you're awake. These are the things that we see as ghosts. Right. Okay. But people that are asleep in Christ are actually literally resting, and when they wake up, it'll be that. But they won't know that time. Yeah. So, and this is once again highly theoretical. But if you do read the Bible, and if a Christian pastor that Bible beats and brow beats his association is telling me to take it literally, then how do they not know that there isn't a hell yet? It, it's so funny. There's that, dark forces at work, but there's no hell. Like right. you're not Angels going to hell. Were never buddy. human to begin with. Right. So yeah. there would be. They wouldn't. We wouldn't pick up on that. Right. So different I'm different dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so funny that you you mentioned. I lost my train of thought. Because Sorry. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> what it's, that usually happens when um spirit comes through for a second. It's like my own thoughts are they're intrusive sometimes. Like they just. Beep, it's not my dog, is it? No. Okay. Why would it be your dog? I don't know. And she's sleeping underneath us. I love you. No. Yeah, I feel her. Um, but they're ghost dogs. Oh yeah. Okay. Hell yeah! I told you they were. All right. Well, I, you know. I and I didn't believe that I could even speak to dogs uh, and and 
or animals in general. Um, until I did a show one time, I was in La Plata, Missouri, and the first animal that I've ever spoke to came through. It was a, it was a, it was a skunk. Oh wow! This lady had uh, found this baby skunk, and she went and had its like stinker yep. removed or whatever. Yeah, suck. Um, and she kept it Peppy Le Pew as a pet for like years and years. And so the skunk's coming through to me, and I, I can see the skunk. <laughs> I know, of right? All that's funny. Yeah. I know. No, it's suck if you're one of those sentient. What was it? The smell one? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Claire Alien. Claire, you don't want that. But he I didn't. Sprayed me. I didn't <laughs> smell Just him. Just bad at all. weed in here, like you know. <laughs> I um, so he comes to me and. I'm just looking at him, but we're communicating telepathically like you would with your fiance or your best friend. You know what they're thinking, but they don't have to say it. So this thing is like, hi, I'm so-and-so and and my mom's here. And I just want you to like, it's like, this is shit's really happening. Oh, that's like a really awesome trip. Please tell me that that skunk's name was Stinky. (laughs) I don't remember the skunk's name. Uh, I always say Pepe Le Pew because um, how it first began was they, well, what is the skunk's name on Bambi? Flower. You fairy. I think you're right. It is. It's flower. It is. Disney. Winner. That's correct. 500 points. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, All right. So a skunk comes through and this is kind of how your connection is with this person. You're seeing a skunk, right? Yeah. In the way that you vision or see in, in the sight, that sixth sense sight is like, uh, and that's kind of a weird question to ask somebody. It's like, wow, here's someone doing a client here, and the first thing that's coming to me is a skunk. Does that make any sense to you? Uh, the second I said, I said, you we call it polecat there? in the South, but go ahead. <laughs> we do. I, I, <laughs> it's the truth. He's friends with a <laughs> friends yeah. with a trash panda. You ain't never had polecat and swamp cabbage. Can't uh, wait to take you back to Florida. I actually might have eaten polecat. Before. Yeah, it's fucking gross. Anyway, that's disgusting. And land gopher, that's actual turtle, but they call it gopher. Because you can eat gophers, but you can't eat turtle. See, everybody thinks like South Florida is like really like, you know, this modern and, you know, away from the country. No, dude, that is where the real cracker was formed. That's where the word cracker comes from because of the bull whip riders. So, like a, the cracker you eat or you, we make it? So, eating? whips crack. Oh. So. Florida is the third largest state That's for cattle. That's why they cattle. call white people crackers. Yep, they yes. crack the whip. It's not because of slavery. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Okay. It's not because of slavery. Cracker came way after, and they actually, there's a whole, I have postcards from the Cracker Division. You just taught me something today. Yeah, so in South Florida, it has huge rodeo influences. Like Bergeron Rodeo is, is big. I mean, you to win at Bergeron in Davie, Florida, you're one of the best rodeo guys there. I mean, that's one of the, the step-ups to get to the main course. You have to win it. Bergeron. But the the thing that people, the cracker was actually a very positive term. And not until people used it in the North where it didn't make any sense to them, it became offensive. Usually when we don't understand something and somebody calls us that, it's automatically offensive. Uh But they don't actually know the true meaning of it. But yeah, crackers were actually just guys that basically were cowboys with whips instead of guns. Did not know that. Because you have steers. I mean, when you have meat cattle, very different from dairy cattle, that's the other thing too. And I love that my daughter is growing up in that world because her... Her mom owns a, you know, 1,500-acre ranch in, in Salem. They have, like, 300 head of Angus, so she's around it every day. But, that you know, kind of a weird segue, but you get into the origins of things, and I think that that is that – I understand how you answered heaven and hell. That makes sense to me because it's like, well, I don't know that, you know, how can somebody come through if they're on fire? It's like, you know, what, it it's like, burns. can you tell me about my son? I don't know, but it's really hot in here. Yeah. So it's like, this is the worst medium read ever. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ. All I that see would be horrific. is fire. <laughs> but have you been at hotels? Have you been places and been like, we got to get the fuck out of here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's rare. Um, like, where, where was that place at? Because he shook his head. And if you don't know, her boyfriend's here. He's actually in the green room. But um, gosh, he I, shook his head, too. I saw him in my periphery. I'm like, oh, God, where was it? We were in, we were in a hotel. And I was taking a shower, and I, I was I was taking a shower, and a it's it looked like the girl from. What's the weird girl that crawls? The ring. Yes. Oh fuck that shit. No lie, no lie. Clicky. Uh, yeah. yeah yes. Well, Grudge had a couple wet dead kids too. Maybe it was the Grudge. I think that's the one I was yeah. thinking more of. And it, it this she didn't look identical to that, but I'm just trying to give you a a visual. It terrified me so bad that I came out of that shower c- completely soaking wet, screaming, didn't I? I was like, we got to go, we got to go. He's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I don't know, my 
like there's some the crazy chick in the so bathroom. So were you just washing your hair and you looked down and this thing was in the she, shower with you? She no, she moved the freaking curtain, which was what Oh fuck. Which was what uh, fuck, this show's over. Which was what fucked with me the most Jesus. was I have never ever had um I well, I have seen, I have had them manipulate things physically, but that was just too much for me. That That's the was, nope part. Come of the on show. in, wash my back while you're here. Yeah, uh, nope. yeah, you'd have it nope. do something else. No, uh, uh-uh. of course and I would. And then when I went to limp, yeah, um, I went by myself because I'm this big bad medium, right? I can handle it. Mm. Plus, plus, it's not haunted. <laughs> but, Bullshit. So I go there. <laughs> so I go there, and um, I find out that I'm the only one staying there that night, which was terrifying. Because you're alone. Because I didn't know that the fr- all the f- fucking staff leave yeah, at night. Yeah, here's the key. Don't go out the back door unless you have it propped open or you'll be locked outside. Yes. So I, That's the scariest part about staying there, actually. Is, <laughs> is getting locked out. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I went in and I said, all cocky, I said, give me the most haunted room that you have here. And the lady goes, <laughs> okay. And she puts me in Patty. Elsie's room or Elsa's room, yeah. number three or the third floor or whatever. Yep. There's that. a Ouija board under a loose floorboard in that room. I found it. Yeah. They're hidden everywhere in the house. I heard that there was a... Um, uh, loose floorboard? Loose floorboard. So I moved the um, the, the rug, because there's a rug over it, and I'm pulling it all up, and I found it, and I there was some crazy shit in there. If that place wasn't already haunted, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> but but it was it was it was the craziest night and so I so you're there alone alone didn't sleep a fucking wink and I was out of there the moment sun up at like five forty five a.m. I'm packing my shit I love that place were you did you interact with anything I did um I said well what I I wanted to believe for like the first three hours that I was there that these were like animatronic things and that they had set this up, you know, these things to happen so that um, you'd keep coming back or I'm trying to figure out how she's turning the lamp on and off, on and off. And so I said, okay, if, if this is spirit, if if this is real and it's not animatronics or whatever, um, make the light flicker in the bathroom and Without a fucking missing a beat, the light flickered in the bathroom. And that's when I was ready to go. That's mm. about 20 feet from where I saw Charles. Really? Yep. Now, I did see Charles, too, um, but I saw him downstairs because... <laughs> in the bar? No, I saw him downstairs in the first room, like right when you walk in on the left. Oh, that's, that's, where, uh, that's where Billy killed himself. Okay, maybe that was who I was seeing. Well, it I depends on didn't how. Didn't have a conversation with him. So, how do people come across? Speaking of the Lemps, because they're very—they're actually a very good-looking family. Mm-hmm. Versus, like, sorry, Bush and Anheuser just weren't gifted in that area. <laughs> the beer is great. They're handsome. <laughs> they're a handsome woman. It's um, a handsome woman you got there. <laughs> Jeez, her mustache is thicker than mine, but <laughs> <laughs> she's a handsome broad. <laughs> but um. The how did when they come or appear or when you see them, can it be any part of their life or just the last moments of their life or can they appear the way they want to be seen as? So I've um, I've actually asked a few of them this because I would like to get to the bottom of it myself and I was told there are things you you're supposed to know and there are things you're not supposed to know and that's one of them. Oh well. Wow. And I was like, okay, I won't. And, and I kind of learned from that moment on, um, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. So do you remember how Charles looked? I don't. It was scared the crap out of me. Was he dressed in anything it, weird? I don't rem- I don't remember. It was so dark. The lights were not on in that room. Mm. But I know that he wasn't a shadow person. No. You know, because you can tell the difference between a shadow person. Because um, Billy is not known to haunt that place. And he committed suicide there. Yeah. I but was, Charles died there. I yes. was surprised at how short he was because I could tell he was a man mm-hmm. and not a boy. Uh, just by his stature, you that know, might like, actually yeah. be Billy. I was surprised. Billy was the short one. Billy Charles was, was that tall. That was why he had a Napoleon problem. Yep. They all were tall, actually, except for Billy. Yep. That's all I remember. Was how short he was. So, if I showed you a picture of spirits and people, mm-hmm. is it almost like a lineup for you? Is it is it fuzzy or is it like no, that's him? 
Is it clear or is it just, uh, I don't know which one it is. Both. It just depends on the day, depends on what I'm supposed to find. Like you might be asking me to do something that um, the universe or spirit is like, no, you knowing this information or you giving this information is going to mess everything up. And so I just don't get it. And then there are other times, like I I work with um, a a good friend of mine, he's a special agent with the Illinois police. And many times he has sent me um, pictures Mm -hmm. and uh, there'll be like um, five or six people that he thinks could have done this. Mm. Uh, Or no, there's, there's like five or six people, but only one of those five or six have, you know, is their prime suspect. And he'll ask me to, to tell him which one I'm drawn to. And so I'll use my little edit thing and I'll circle. Are you drawn to that because of a guide? Because these people are still living. How does that work? What do you mean? So if you had five suspects, is it cold case or is it, are these people dead and gone or are they still alive? Both. Both. And in this case, this late, late last one, latest one, um, I circled two people out of the six and he said, Oh my God. Um, we, they're brothers and they, we believe they committed this crime together. And he said, he said, I expected you to just circle one. Oh, that's creepy. So, and then, um, so one of the brothers was dead already and the other one was getting ready to get released. I think, I think that's how that was. So where am I getting my information from? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. I'm not really for sure. (laughs) Sometimes I think it's like, um, like the Heather Teague case, mm-hmm. I recently, I never even heard of that case. I don't know if you remember that, Heather Teague. Um, she got abducted on the Ohio State River Bank in Kentucky or yeah. Ohio? I, in, in Kentucky, yeah. It was like a Maura, Maura Murray, another girl just vanishes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so in this case, in her case, she came to me during a meditation. She said, find my mom, Sarah. I never even heard of this case. All I knew was her name was Heather. I I saw what happened to her and then I was supposed to find Sarah. So I just got on my phone and Googled it. And um, her case is the first one that pops up. There's a a article and it's about her mom, Sarah talking about this. So I found her mom, Sarah, and I was like, Hey, listen, um, you're gonna think this is crazy. (laughs) And we've talked a little bit about her case and what's going on with that. And I gave her the information that her daughter wanted, wanted her mom to have, you know, in an effort, I guess, to help with the case. But so, it, it turns out the prime suspect, I had no idea about this either, but the prime suspect is just got released in her case. Oh. So it was like the timing was crazy that she comes through, you know, three or four. But they didn't have anything on him? He murdered his wife. And, um, she, you know, he murdered his girlfriend. No, he murdered his wife. (laughs) And she looked, uh, very much like Heather did. And, um, there were five or six other girls that went missing around the time that he was in certain locations. Mm. So, I mean, they've got a pretty good case. It's just, they don't have the evidence. Yeah. So, I mean, hell, you can convict in certain states without even a murder weapon mm-hmm. or a body, um, which is insane to me. That you, Because that, for me, is like it's thin. It's really thin. But, I mean, there are states that you can convict somebody without a body, without a weapon or nothing. Um, well, I guess the question I have for you, and, and as we start to wrap the show up, the the thing I'll ask, ask Jeremy, too, if he's thought of anything he wants to ask you, but... Um, for an audience, you know, for us, to, you know, you're on our team. I think a lot of people don't know that. I mean, we do have haunted transportation. Um, and you've said to yourself on this show a couple of times, a car can absolutely be haunted. Yeah. Um, and when they are haunting these things, and I think we have a specific Cadillac that the next time you come down, I'll have you look at, that, that definitely has something going on. Um, I mean, even, uh, you know, Fabian had an experience. I mean, I think we all... It was, it was insane because all of our gadgets were going off. And in my 20 years of uh, ghost hunting, I've never had that much activity that fast and, and resilient. We actually had the whole thing on, on tape, too. So awesome. it's pretty crazy. But um, is, there, the, the, is there a reason why they're haunting the vehicle? Or are they trying to tell us something? Or are they just you know wanting to be there? And that's how it works. Right. So I have like a I, – I can't say – 
a beef with the word haunting, but it's, it's like they're able to be here just as much as we are. Cause like we said earlier, we're sharing the same plane. It's just a different dimension. Mm. Um, so you, you can, you know, swing a cat and hit 10 spirits. You won't see them <laughs> if you get, if you're, if, but at any given time, I feel like you, you can, um, experience spirit mm. anywhere. Something that I wanted to bring up to you that, and I don't know if you've thought about this, I'm sure you have, um, but I was talking to him about how many clients I've had who have loved ones that killed themselves in their car. So like not even a car wreck, nothing like that, just straight up suicide in the car. Um, people, you know, truck drivers dying of a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's just all kinds of... Car accidents. If, yeah. And so that residual energy... Um, if you were to give me, uh, it's called psycho- psychometry, but if you were to give me a piece of metal or something that someone held when they were here, I, I would be able to read the energy of, of what happened with that. So it's really no different with car. It doesn't mean that they're stuck there. It means I, I'm getting in this vehicle and I'm picking up on the person that was here or is here right now. You know what I mean? Whether they're haunting it or not, it's, it's, I feel like it's a really complicated concept for just about anybody to get, and I don't have a very good way of explaining it. I've said yeah. that before, where I've told you I that. I agree with it. Yeah. Uh, that there's no way that ghosts are stuck to a house. That's ridiculous. No. <laughs> it, they can it, move through walls. What keeps them from walking out the door? Yeah. They're, they, it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, How that, many I mean, times yeah. have you moved somewhere and then drove past that house and said, oh, that used to be my house? Mm-hmm. I mean... It's no different than a spirit dropping in and being like, oh, hey, what's, I used to drive this. I killed myself here. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just. It. We've had a spirit that has followed us from several moves. Yeah. Like my parents still have stuff happen at their house and it's the same kind of stuff that happened in their house. We lived in St. Charles and in Overland. Hmm. I think the thing that's been going again, sorry, another edit. Um, The thing that's been following you has been with you since. I knew you at the Crystal Grill. There's something that follows me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, remember we talked about it on the porch. Free. You brought that shit in here. Free <laughs> will is the strongest law and and the most respected law across all dimensions. Um, and one part of free will is I can go wherever I want and I can do whatever I want. And once we leave our body, we are able to be in so many different places at once. So people be like, well, why would this dead person come back and hang out at this car? They might be at that car, but they may also be with their little girl, with their husband. You know, th- they can be in so many other places. Time time is irrelevant outside yeah, of Rome. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Rome. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think that's a lot of the, the conjecture that you hear. I think that's, you know, where a lot of the, the stuff stems from. Like Hollywood is also has this concept that, and, and they did it with Beetlejuice, and they did it with um, the first season of American Horror Story, and they're doing it now with, you know, Teen Spirit, which is a new show on Netflix where the girl dies in the school and she can't leave the school because every time she tries to leave that the school, it goes somewhere else. Off. And it's just such a Hollywood concept. It now, is. it's almost like the same thing with the vampires right vampires can't be in the sunlight and they all have to follow unless you're you know a twinkly one but um <laughs> i you know they follow a certain like scope of thing because they're saying well it's not true it's not real so we can say what it is but it's an so why hollywood does it is because hollywood dumbs everything down and usually it's majority rule yeah. so if everybody you sent a focus group out there and say what do you think happens when you die you stay stuck in a place and you can't leave like beetlejuice yeah. And that is a consensus. And so that's why Hollywood uses those triggers because they don't want to introduce a new concept unless the new concept is about what the movie's supposed to be about, a new concept. And that's what was great about movies like Insidious where they created the further and they created so many different dimensions. And and I, I guess I honestly, like the thing that, the, the one, last question I have for you is objects. Like it, around you and in this room, there are objects on my shelves. They were all owned by somebody at one time. And when my mom was down, I had I went up to... Um, St. Clair went to an antique store and they have a huge antique store there. And I asked the lady, I'm like, man, where do you acquire all this stuff? And she's like, well, it's just dead people shit. Mm -hmm. One day your shit will be in here. And it's, it's the fucking truth, truth. man. It's like when you go to an antique store or when you buy an antique car, I mean, and, and, and people are like, well, I don't understand why a new car can't be haunted. We've never said that a new car can absolutely be haunted, but I'll tell you one thing. 
The cars that are classic cars, I believe there are more thought projections in them because you were your energy There's was more history in it. Right. And you <laughs> spent a lot of energy on it. Because yeah. if you bought a car in the sixties, you could buy a V six and make it a V eight because it's the same car, same frame, same all these things. So you, you can literally make an SS in your garage. That's what you used to call them. The SS garage was you would buy a you know a sixty nine Chevelle that had a three fifty in it. Well you'd swap that in sixty nine to a three nine six and then suddenly you have an SS because that's essentially what made it different. So today you can't do that with cars. So yeah, maybe somebody can have a head on collision but Nobody's sitting out in their parking lot. Like, I changed my antenna on my car to a shorter one because it's a blind spot. That's one of the things about the Ford Raptor is that their actual antenna is one of the biggest complaints is because the guys that use those cars are going to Baja and shit, and that fucking antenna literally sits right in your vision. So they sell a bunch of different smaller antennas. Um, but it's weird aesthetics like that, right? So, but with cars from the day versus cars now is that you don't spend a lot of time in your car. You're either taking it somewhere to get an oil change. You're, you're an exception. All your cars are old anyway. You don't have new cars. I was going to say, I don't like new cars. Yeah. So you don't even own new cars. So it's like, um, I don't know. I think that for us, I mean like living in a house, great, but my, my dad's had four houses in his lifetime. So when he dies, where does he go? Where does he haunt? Once again, you might only ever have that one sixty nine Barracuda. And you can't buy that. You can't buy a new car, even in your older years, that will ever replicate that unless you go back. And that's what we see in the business. The business sense of Haunted Garage is that, hey, do you have a 71 Nova? Why? Well, I had a 71 Nova when I was in high school. Or my uncle had one, and I always wanted his car, and now i finally at my place in, in my life where I have one. You know, can you make it black? Can you make it? I go, we can. you show me a picture of it, we can make it. And it'll, you know, it won't be that car because I don't have the VIN number. Or we can look for that car. We can look for that VIN number somewhere in, in an estate. So... But I think that, like you said earlier, I mean, all things can be haunted. All things can have a physical realm that people want to visit and, and, and go into. So I guess that last question really comes upon an actual object, yeah. something that somebody owned, that antique store that where we started mm-hmm. this conversation. If I handed something to you, could you pick up something? Is, is that a thing? Yeah, it's called psychometry. And people um, use that. People say that um, different. Everybody says that differently, just FYI. But um, yeah, so energy is, um, it can never be destroyed, right? That's physics. That's not woohoo bullshit. And so if you're, if you pick something up or if you hold something, your energy, you're leaving an energetic imprint on that. Um, What I'm necessarily going to pick up could be totally different from, um, what you thought I would say because somebody else may have touched it and you have no idea who the hell that person is or, you know, whatever the situation is, but we most definitely can get um, impressions and feelings off off of um, something holding or touching something that's um, energetically been touched by that person. So if I had a alleged suicide, AKA murder weapon from our case sitting in the other room and I handed you that revolver, how is that for when you say energy goes into something, right. And, and it becomes something more, right. Um, Cause you're, you're essentially you're imprinting, mm-hmm. right. But is the imprint on a suicide weapon more than just a hairbrush? Yeah. Because it would be so tragic. Right. Is that right. what you, yeah. yeah. Um, just like, yes. The simple answer is yes. You want to see what you get from the gun? Uh, I don't know. Is this a case that I'm even aware of? No. Okay. Yeah? Okay. 